Firstly, it's, it really is a very special privilege and it's an honor to be sharing a few words with my dear friend Eli Rabinowitz, who, when I think about my time in Australia, it starts and dates back to my days in Perth, to whom I'm indebted for his hospitality and his friendship, to Eli, Jill, and the family, two boys were little boys at the time. Today, we're lucky to be able to have Dean married with a child davening with me in our shul here in Sydney. We were very privileged a few uh, weeks ago, a week and a half ago, to be hosting here in Sydney a household name from the days that I grew up, from the first time I can ever remember, knowing that my grandfather is a survivor. The name Sugihara was synonymous with his survival. I recently heard that a great-grandchild of Mr. Sugihara himself, who, as I'm sure many of the viewers of this clip and this website would be familiar, Mr. Sugihara was the Consul General um, who had the merit to save thousands there's still uh, opinions on how many thousands, but certainly we know of close to 3,000 official ones, and then there were many unofficial ones of people who received from him transport visas to be able to spend time in Japan. The Jews themselves weren't necessarily interested in knowing how and where they would be. The most important thing was that they'd be getting out of Europe, getting out of the arms way of what was then the rolling tanks, the German tanks, quickly, swiftly coming through the European countries. My grandfather, Rabbi Cheskel Deren, was one of those very fortunate Yidin to be on Sugihara's transport visas list. In fact, the whole story of Sugihara, in a sense, was probably only brought to the Jewish people some 30 or something years ago. I believe it was by way of the Reader's Digest who did a story, I think, in the early 80s. And um, then we, my, we, we found out a little bit of what, what, what had happened and the people who, who were saved through him. Um, my grandfather, so many survivors, never really spoke about what had happened to them. It was too painful, too difficult to even share with their most loved ones. And so back to our story here, I heard that Sugihara's great-grandson was going to be coming to Australia, and together with various families who are also recipients of the transport visas, like the Greenbergs, Roths, Mashovskis, and others, we made plans to be able to look after him here. I suggested that perhaps we should bring him to our synagogue. After all, there are not only us, but people in general, the Jewish people, would like to be able to be blessed um, by having him here, and we have a very special uh, mitzvah, which is called Hakara Satev, recognition of those who've done good things for us. We not only have a long memory for those who do the, bad, the worst to us, but I think Jews, more than anything, have a long memory for those who've done good for us, and we wanted to recognize that. I thought it would be also appropriate to invite the Consul General of Japan, uh, who sits in the exact same position that his great-grandfather did, and so indeed, just a few days, this all happened within a week of Shabbos. Within a few days, we got confirmation that the Consul General would come here. And it was truly a Shabbos, which will be one of the most memorable weekends in the synagogue for anybody who was fortunate to be here that Shabbos. Hundreds of people came to Shul. So the Consul General arrived here, and as I mentioned, it was a very memorable Shabbos. Um, Shabbos Day, I shared a few words from the pulpit with the community and, of course, addressing K. Sugihara, the great-grandchild. Um, we spoke about the experiences that probably my grandfather, as many thousands of others, had when they came standing outside of the embassy where his great-grandfather and how his grandmother, actually, great-grandmother, describes it uh, in a fascinating documentary found today uh, on YouTube by the History Channel. And she writes about the sad faces that she noticed outside her window, hundreds of them standing there seeking assistance and help. And he had, of course, uh, quickly made contact by cable 
to his government in Japan, and the response was negative in regards to just helping these people out easily. It was going to be a long, laborious um, exercise, and he couldn't sleep, literally, for two nights. He, from one side, his government was telling him one thing, from the other side, his conscience was telling him that God wants him to do something else. And hence began what we know, the miracle of the Sugihara survivors. He started working days and nights into ensuring that everybody who he could help would be helped. So much so that we're told that his hands were swollen from working so hard and had to be iced. And even when he finally was uh, told to leave and taken um, from his post on the train itself, he was still throwing out visas to the helpless Jews on the sides. And... Um, the Jewish people, or at least in my grandfather's case, when they came through Japan, ultimately, um, at a point of uh, when Japan became an ally with Germany, it was becoming too difficult for the Jews to stay there, they were brought and transported to Shanghai. My grandfather was part of a group of boys, young teenagers, who sought the Lubavitcher Rebbe's advice. Um, this is the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak Schneerson, who was the father-in-law of the late Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson. These boys were in a yeshiva in Poland called Atvotsk, and they asked the Rebbe what they should do when the war broke out, because it was natural for everybody to run away and run back to their families and seek refuge together with their loved ones. The Rebbe uh, at that time said not to do that. They should go to Lithuania. And it was there in Lithuania where, of course, the majority of the Bacham who, 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 who traveled together there uh, ultimately were all uh, recipients of the Besogihara transport visas. And they then um, almost took the Yeshivas Tomchei Tmimim, as it was known, from Atvotsk to Shanghai. Um, I actually took that magnificent photo of the 35 or 45 Bacham all standing together with a big a signage in front of them that says Yeshiva Stomchei Tmimim Otvotsk Shanghai um, and my grandfather's the youngest in the little uh, row there and I framed that and together with a piece of paper which had my grandfather's name amongst the many on that sheet which by coincidence happens to be one of the very last names on, on, the, on the list uh, and I framed that and presented it on Shabbos to K. Sugihara um, and wrote on the bottom of that a Talmudic quote, which is a pillar of inspiration for our people. And that is, he who saves one life is as if he saves an entire world. How many worlds has this grand great-grandfather of his saved? In my case, personally, my grandfather, Rabbi Chaskol Dernal Basholem, had Kananahara, uh, many children, each of them many children themselves, and today great-grandchildren, uh, in the hundreds. It's uh, an Ayn Hara to give the exact number, but it, it's in the hundreds, uh, literally hundreds. And that's one of the thousands. Multiply that by thousands. And you have walking around the world today in the tens of thousands of people. From who? One single person who refused to allow the world and the injustice to carry on. How powerful, how amazing that one person can make such a difference to the entire world, to the entire, to the entire Jewish people today because of what a, one individual, not Jewish, not expected of him. It was easy. He put his life and his children and his wife at risk. But he ultimately did what he believed was right. And because of that, I'm here today. And so many who came to shul expressed exactly that. We had, I believe, close to nine families in shul on the day. And then following my presentation um, and the case of Gihara coming up and uh, giving me a hug, a very warm embrace, uh, embrace me, the congregation just sort of stood up together and, and gave, him a, uh, gave him a standing ovation. 
We then had invited, as I mentioned earlier, the Consul General to share a few words, and that was also very moving to hear how a country um, has come around 180 to their views of, of course, what they believed was the right attitude then, and what today they recognize as being the absolute wrong attitude. And he spoke about the museum that they had now built and opened up in honor of Sugihara in the same little town that Sugihara lived and was born prior to being um, sent as a member of the uh, foreign ministry. <coughs> they also are just finished filming um, a, a, a movie which, would, which is going into production. It's going to be uh, uh, available for screening I believe in the fall, you mentioned a Japanese uh, famous actress who is going to who's who, who shot the, who's in the, in the role as Sugihara's wife, uh, and and he spoke about to me one of the nicest things he mentioned was the fact that in Japan today, when they took a poll of uh, ten of the greatest heroes amongst the youth, Sugihara was one of the top ten. That says a lot of a people, and. Um, it was very, very moving to hear him speak. And then we went after the services into the foyer and we set up a big kiddush, um, lots of sushi for the Jews and gefilte fish for the Japanese, of course. They are crazy for our gefilte fish, I'm sure, just like we are for their sushi. We had l'chaim and sake and uh, it was a great, lively, but a most emotional fabrenge. As I mentioned, the nine families each had a representative who stood up and spoke, and each one broke down. Some of them couldn't speak any further. Some of them made their way through their, their, their feelings and words with tears. But it was a very special day, a memorable day, as I said earlier, and, and, and a day where we were reminded how we can all be a savior for another human being. Uh, Sugihara's are individuals who live amongst us and are not known until they do what they have to do. And we ought to be the Sugiharas to our fellow Jews and to our fellow human beings in the wider community. Uh, what a day to be sitting with my dear friend Eli Rabinowitz. Uh, as I speak to you here, my eyes keep on uh, being focused on the screen on my right. Uh, we're watching the sad breaking news of a hostages in Martin Place um, with what seems to be uh, all indications an act of terror. Uh, we pray and our wishes, of course, to them and the families for what they are, the anxiety and, 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 and the fear that must, they must be experiencing. But as we also know, and as we have been reminded, and once again we will be reminded with the flames of the Hanukkah candles in just another two nights, Tomorrow night, it's Monday here, tomorrow night is Hanukkah. The dark, small little bit of darkness dispels lots of, a small little bit of light, excuse me, dispels lots of darkness. Uh, even the few over the many, certainly in a case where the many are, are good and the many are, 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 are peaceful, certainly in a country like Australia. And may Hashem bless us that we can all be the shamash, a, a candle of light, igniting and giving light to others bringing God's magnificent candelabra uh, into full glory and full light. May we all be blessed with a peaceful, with a happy, and with a joyous Hanukkah.